Hey guys, hope everyone's doing good this Thursday. Ron from Fallout Hobbies here. We uh, weren't live last week because we've been packing orders like crazy from Black Friday and we're just kind of finishing that out now. So hopefully the last wave of orders will be out soon. But uh, last time we did a video two weeks ago, uh, I was working on this Eldar webway gate and I'm just going to continue that today and there's some stuff I'm going to do. I'm going to paint some gemstones, show you how I do those. I'm going to paint a few details. I'm going to solder the battery clip to this and show you how these little uh, lily pad battery clips work. And I'm also going to, you might see there's a black light off to the side here. Let's see, there it is. There's a black light off to the side on purpose because I have this UV drying resin that I'm going to use to make um, little gemstones on the areas where I already put the LEDs here. As always, Jules is here. Hey guys, what's up? So if you have any questions, comments, just hit us up in real time. And uh, let's get into it. We got to paint a couple details before I can do the gemstone thing, like on the inner track here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use uh, one of these Turbo Door colors. Silver Fox is really a nice color. I'm debating on whether I want to use Silver Fox or whether I, I want to use uh, Six Shooter because that is a very, very nice gunmetal color. And I think I'm going to use Six Shooter. So the inner track here has like this kind of like ribbing. I'm just going to quickly paint that and paint these little uh, areas around the LEDs here. I don't think I've actually showed this yet in this video. How this looks on the LEDs all light up. There we go. So the last video we did, I showed how I installed all those. And um, I'm going to do some detail painting and I'm going to do some gemstones over top of them so they don't just look like LEDs floating, so they actually look like gemstones. A little bit of this one up here. Get out some six shooter. This color. It's just like the perfect gunmetal color. Oh, that's interesting. Weird. I didn't realize that these uh, optics inside the LEDs actually react to the black light. Look at how they see how they're glowing when I get them near the black light. That's really cool. It's weird. It's like they're like UV reactant or something. I really want to try something with some UV paint. It's fun. I got UV paint. Mm -hmm. You know what would be cool for a video, babe? Hmm. To do like, you know how Tyranids are all organic? Yeah. And you know how I have like all the skin stencils? Right. Doing like a couple Tyranid figures, like some of the bigger ones, but doing them um, like you then UV reactive paint with all the like skin textures and stuff. Oh, that would be cool. 
maybe I'll do that in a future video. That's a good idea. Like, you know, painting the wings like, like two contrasting colors. But both like bright, like UV colors. Mm hmm Make them look like they're like some kind of bioluminescent fish. So I hope everyone's been having a good, uh, you know, pre-Christmas, post-Black Friday time period, whatever this is, this time period in between holidays. I think it's like uh, just cats knocking ornaments off the tree is the, the thing that's going to happen between now and Christmas constantly at this point. We well, just put yeah. the tree up, so. Yeah, I mean. Every day I'm just like and trees, like picking balls up off the floor. How is that different than normal? And Cleo just like launched herself into it like last night. Yeah, it's we have crazy. cats climbing trees now. <laughs> They're not just knocking ornaments off anymore. They didn't do it last year. I don't know why. Different tree last year. Or maybe they couldn't because it was smaller. Probably. A purple tree. Yeah. I, I don't think that that was big enough to get a cat up in it. You know what else would be cool with, with, uh, Glow, like day glow paint hmm. like doing some necron stuff with that but painting all their weapons with day glow paint and all the little like tubes and everything like that with day glow paint and then setting up some purple like uv leds in different areas of like the bases so that they like shine up onto the the weapons you know what i mean Yeah, I think that would be really, really cool. Or like the the monoliths, mm -hmm. the pyramid looking things, like having some UV LEDs like mixed into that. And then like everything that's like their text or their eyes or control panels or weapons done in like UV. We have been trying to get some Necron monoliths from GW. They haven't shipped it out to us the last couple times. That was one of the things we ordered a while back that never got fulfilled. Yeah. Oh, they're kind of hot also, right now. Yeah, and they're, GW's kind of hit up with some of the stuff. And the smaller stores don't really get dibs on that kind of stuff, you know? So I was trying to order a couple monoliths. And I was trying to order the uh, the new Saitan. Neither of those came Don't mind the god awful construction noise outside. We've had the same three guys working on the same building across the street for like months, and it looks like nothing's been done. It was really aggravating when it was like 6 45 in the morning. I walked, I actually looked it up too. They usually start around seven, 
and I checked to see if there was like a noise ordinance thing, which I've never done before, but it's it's getting to be a little excessive. <laughs> Apparently they are allowed to start at seven. 6.45, no. No jackhammers at 6.45. Jackhammers. All right, so while I'm waiting for that to dry on the inside there, I guess I'll put the first coat on the gemstones because I can't really do the resin thing until that gunmetal color is dry. So we use some royal purple over here. I'm gonna do the gemstones kind of like a a purple color but not illuminated the way that the LEDs will be. Does anyone have any questions or comments so far? No, not yet. Is there anyone watching? <laughs> yes, there are, there are people watching. Okay. I notice like they, they tend to ask more questions when you're doing stuff that's like more technical, like the LEDs and stuff. Yeah, well we're gonna get into the technical stuff in a in like fifteen minutes or so. When you're just like painting little fluffy webways in your Bob Ross you know, style over there. I do like so my Bob Ross style. I do. I do get a lot of satisfaction out of painting Eldar gemstones. I know most people don't. I know a lot of people find them to be tedious. But I get satisfaction out of them because I find them relaxing to paint. gemstone on the chest that's an LED okay, so I'm not going to touch that one right now Oh, I smudged it over here. That's okay, I can go back and fix it up afterwards. I'm just gonna leave it alone for a minute because I don't wanna smudge it anymore. I must have put my finger in that or something. It's a perfect opportunity for an in, in, inappropriate joke, and you didn't take it, Hoop. Nope, I didn't. Mm. 
And you did leave yourself wide open, but I figured. Actually, while I'm letting this dry for a few minutes, so I can't really do anything until it's dry because I don't want to smudge the next layer. Um, the next thing we're going to do is actually the uh, UV resin, but I want to wait a moment till this first layer of gemstone stuff is dry. So I think that I actually will do that. I think I will get like a Tyranid figure and break out all the skin stencils and use the UV colors that I have and make it look like some kind of crazy like bioluminescent creature. I think that would be cool. I mean, why not, you know? This was a good idea today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've had a long week this week already. I'm going to tell you that much. We've had personnel problems. We've had freaking work-related problems. We've had... Just a, a crazy amount of orders that we're still fulfilling. Which is not a bad problem. It's not a bad problem. But Black Friday did spill into like two rooms. It was pretty nuts. Yeah, it was the best Black Friday we ever had though, by far. But we've been, um, you know, trying to get all the orders out as quick as possible. Yeah, there hasn't been a day where we haven't been packing and printing and packing and printing. And packing and printing some more. And when we say printing, we mean like printing in all regards because we're running like four form printers right now. I'm printing out like door, shoulder pads for a chapter customizer, all that stuff like every day. So it's been busy, but I like busy. I'd rather be busy than be bored and broke. Except today we decided to take a painting and uh, whiskey lunch yeah. break. We're, I'm drinking while I'm painting. I don't <laughs> care if you judge me. <laughs> is this almost done here? This is where I could use like a blow dryer or something to speed this up. I thought you said don't use blow dryers because it's like not good for the model. Uh, don't use blow dryers on stencils. Mm. If it's just pure painting and there's no like stencils or anything like that, you could use a blow dryer on low to speed up the drying of the paint. But if you're using a blow dryer on the stencils, the, the plastic of the stencils is so thin that the blow dryer could like distort it or make it curl or something like that. All right, I'm gonna do a little, while I wait a few more minutes for this to dry, we're gonna do a little UV resin test over here. Okay, for some reason, apparently we are getting comments and it wasn't showing until I just refreshed the page. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> sorry, so Michael Green is saying, new to the page, what's this all about? He's been a modeler for 30 years and wants to know what you're working on. And then he says, don't think my comments are going through. No, sorry, they were not. <laughs> no, sorry, they, they were. We're using um, a couple different things to stream because we're streaming on multiple channels right now. So No, we're just doing Facebook right now. Oh, we're just doing Facebook? Yeah. Okay, we didn't hook up Twitch or anything for today. No. Um, well, the um, we just weren't getting the comments till just now, so... Usually it would refresh in real time. For some reason it didn't refresh. I'm working on an Eldar webway gate and it's the second part video because two weeks ago I did the first part where I showed um, like how to use Fallout Hobby stencils to do that to do this like Hesh uh, 
hex mesh part, sorry, tongue tied for a second. And then um, I also showed how I was lighting up LEDs in, in there. Uh, this is the other half of it that's not uh, finished that you could see how I, you know, wired the LEDs up there. So last week's video was me showing, you know, how to do this. And this week's, what we're doing is um, finishing up some details on here. I'm going to paint some gemstones and whatnot. I want to give, I want to airbrush some washes over this shortly, but I also want to get the UV gemstones on here. Carl Tanzer says it looks awesome. Thanks, Carl. And Vicky and Alan um, say, yeah, Fallout Hobbies make and sell airbrush stencils for your miniatures. Sometimes Ron demonstrates what he's working on using his own products. And Carl also says, by the way, glad to see you like my Black Legion Land Raider. Oh, yeah. That, that Carl? Okay, cool. Yeah, that I saw the Black Legion Land Raider a couple of days ago. He used the Chaos stencil. It was like a very purist color scheme like the traditional black legion black vehicle gold chaos stars mm -hmm. it was very nicely done very crisp so it was cool and thanks vicky and alan yeah we we do not only stencils we do decals uh we also do a lot of custom 3d printed stuff tank doors shoulder pads repulsor doors so check this stuff out, guys. This is craft resin, uh, UV craft resin that I just picked off of Amazon. Uh, what's this company's name? Limino. There's literally like a dozen companies that sell the exact same stuff. It drops on clear like this, but then if you stick it under, like I have it on, there's a black light right off camera here. Let me see if I could get this black light on it. There we go. So this black light, pretty much solidifies this stuff like within a few seconds which is kind of awesome um and michael green says man this shit is so cool see it's already solid it's already solid from that i mean it's got a little bit of smush but not too much so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna apply a droplet of it over top of each light and let the surface tension of the resin keep it kind of in like a drop form and then put that under a black light and have it harden while it's still like that. There we go. See? Oh god, I hit a wire. Surface tension is keeping it in gemstone form still. Yeah. Uh, Vicky and Allen said, must have missed that video about the Black Legion. It's the army I'm doing at the moment. And Carl says, thanks, your stencils did the big part of the work. Thanks, man. So I have this, uh, I'm shining this under a black light for a few moments here. Which is, the black light's losing balance. And it's hard as a rock. Already. That's what she said. There you go. There's the dirty jokes. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> Alright, what's that stuff you're using? I'm going to share a link to it. So now, hold on a second. If you see up close, there's actually a gemstone over top of the LEDs now. So I sliced off all the opaque ones and replaced them with this stuff. It's called Limino. Limino. It's a UV. It's UV curing craft resin. It uh, this stuff hardens pretty quick under a black light. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just having it create. Sorry, I keep pulling on the cord attached to the phone and it's shaking the camera. I don't mean to do that. I gotta 
take this cord off to the side. And here is a link to the UV curing uh, resin jizz that he's using. There we go. Two gemstones down. Sorry for shaking the camera. I'm just moving the cord out of the way one last time. I was like right at elbow height. All right, so two of them down. It's only going to take another couple of minutes to do the remaining four, five, five gemstones that way. It's cool stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. This is what I did that one craft project with uh, the boys. Oh, yeah? We found bugs around the neighborhood that were dead. And seal the dead bugs and some resin. Of course you did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was fun. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It reminds me, all the blacklight stuff reminds me of back in the day. Because, like, we grew up in, like, the 80s and 90s. And well, yeah. Remember, like, the blacklight posters that used to be really, really popular? I had a bunch of them. It's like, you know. The Spencer's you, Gifts ones. Right? I remember Spencer's. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't ever want to stop playing with black lights. I mean, why would you? And it looks like uh, Vicky and Alan said. Is it posted on uh, YouTube, the video with the cast star? Carl Tanzer says, you might be able to make the whole gate out of this resin. And also with the LED, it would look really like an active webway portal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Vicki and Alan, you could probably... <sighs> The, the uh, Black Legion one, that was Carl's. Yeah. Um, Carl, if you want to post the link to your Facebook page, um, that would be great because you got some awesome stuff on there and his Instagram as well. Uh, and then all of his Black Legion stuff is on there. I believe it's actually called Black Legion Studios. I believe that's the name of his. I believe so as yeah. well. So I've shared stuff. Yeah, stuff yeah, for. he's got some good stuff on there. So, uh, yeah, definitely check it out. And I apologize, guys, for reading your comments a little slower. For some reason, on my end, I keep having to refresh the page to actually see them. I don't know Weird. why it's doing that today. The Alpha It didn't do that book. last time. No. Mm -mm. No idea. No. Ah, dear. Okay, so we got one. Is that dry? That's dry, two, three, four. Carl is sharing this video. A guy actually did a... All right, I'm going to slaughter this, so I'll just spell it and you can pronounce it. A N-O-C-T-I-L-I-T-H crown. Not, not to lift crown. Not to lift crown. Yeah. I'm horrible at pronouncing stuff. Yeah, the Games Workshop rep laughs at us. <laughs> then he's like, it's okay. They're all made up names anyway. And yeah, and they're all faux Latin. And Vicky and Alan is saying thank you for the video that Carl shared. Right. So the inner ring of gemstones is done with the uh, UV resin. So there it is. 
and they're actually glowing gemstones. Pretty neat, huh? It's weird. They look like purple, but then on the video, they look like more like magenta. Yeah, the video always picks up colors differently. This one gemstone got a little smushed. They are purple in person, just FYI. There we go. There we go. The one gemstone needed a little bit more filling out. And then, oh, excuse me. Sorry, it's been a long day. Uh, Jacob um, Ekman says, really cool. Thanks. Thanks, man. There's one last gemstone, which is the chest one here. So let me get... Oh, you gotta be careful with this. You don't want to... It's a really kind of like precision application. You don't want to put too much or too little. Um, Jacob also is asking, where's the batteries? That I will show you in a minute. Let me, uh, I got this under the black light right over here, just hardening it up again. It only takes a few seconds to do that. Yeah, it only takes a few seconds to get hard. <laughs> no, <it's bad. laughs> now you're going to make it your point to find everything that could possibly be in any window. No, I think it's like our lunch day break with some whiskey finally kicked in. Mm. Oh, good. It's better than being stressed out. There we go. That, yep, that's hard. Actually, the resin is a little off-sided. I'm just going to put just a little bit more there. Ah, that's where it is. Screwed it up. No. Recovered. Let's get that in there. So the batteries. Um, these micro LED kits that I sell use can run off of coin cell batteries. So this is a three volt coin cell. LR32, I believe is the, is the number. CR2032. And um, what I'm doing here is I'm gonna be mounting each one of these Webway halves on one of these oval bases because I'm going to eventually add, you know, some rubble and some broken statue bits and maybe a little bit of vines and overgrown foliage. So the battery will, the battery clip will hide somewhere in that rubble. Like if I make a rubble pile off to the side, I'll make it a little hollow so the battery clip can be kind of hidden like underneath of a rock or something like that. Um, so what I need to do is do a quick soldering job and connect these wires coming out of the bottom to the battery clip and then I can just hide it anywhere I want, really. You can also use the micro LEDs and like smaller figures and hide it under a base. So we also sell these base risers for uh, 40 millimeter, 50 and 60. You know what? Well talk to them for a second because I'm going to go grab the one figure to show them. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. So how is everybody doing today? What is everybody working on project-wise? I personally, um, I've been caught up doing a bunch of custom designs and I'm a little backlogged with that for you guys right now and uh, printing out decals like crazy. And I'm also building some um, Raging Heroes figures that are pretty cool. And Ron will be back momentarily to show you this in action. So, 
Here's an example of a typhus figure that I built using the same um, micro LED kits. It's got a lily pad built in under the base and this was a uh, 50 millimeter base. And what we sell is these rings that attach to the bottom of the base that elevate it a couple millimeters so that the lily pad will fit flush and stand up. And the cool thing is the lily pads have a little on off switch already. So here's Jacob says he's finishing a competition piece for a painting competition. Awesome. Nice. So here's a, here's Typhus, uh, with his eyes lit up to give him a little extra presence. And that's all hidden under here. I believe I did this in a video like a year ago, didn't I? Like uh, this. It it feels like it was last year, but I don't know. Like twenty twenty makes yeah, everything's a little bit of a blur. I'm pretty blur. sure I did this in a video on one of our Facebook <laughs> live streams like a year ago, but um, that's uh, the basic gist. So here the same thing. Except with this one, it was only one LED that I hooked up, so the battery will last a pretty long time. This one, the battery will probably get killed after a few hours, but that's okay. Hey man, it was on our page that um, our Black Friday gift cards, Jeremy, are not for GW products. We are only stockists, and you know, we... Uh, the profit margin on those is not very high as is, and um, so, we already yeah. uh, was Jeremy asking to use gift cards on a uh, on GW stuff. Uh, he says he has two hundred dollars worth of gift cards, but can't use them on GW products, and he's disappointed about it. Well, that was part of the terms with the cards. I'm sorry about that, man, but yeah, yeah, we. we we, we had the term, yeah, we had the terms about the gift cards that it's, it wasn't on GW stuff. You have to understand that these store, like we don't, when, when GW sells products to us, there's, they're not like at a deep discount. Like even something like a regular kit, like a regular GW kit, you know, say it was like a $50 kit. Most stores sell that at a discount because a lot of people don't want to pay full retail price for it. So they'll usually sell it around like 10% off. And if you sell like a 50, like what would retail for a $50 kit, you sell that 10% off. So you're selling it around, you know, $45 instead of $50. But the store is paying probably about 30 something dollars for that kit, roughly. And then there's shipping. And then, in. yeah, there's shipping and all that stuff. So, I mean, stores usually only make like a couple bucks off of like the GW kits. The thing that... I don't know any hobby stores, honestly, that do discounts like lower than 10%. I mean, they wouldn't it's be like able eBay. to make, they wouldn't be able to make any money. And we're not eBay resellers. Like if you buy, like if someone bought like a box of Marines and it was deeper than a 10% discount they would make maybe $10 yep. off that sale. Like Pretty not, much. not, not even sometimes like more like eight bucks off the sale. So yeah, we can't do that kind of discounts. And that was part of the verbiage that, you know, that discount does not apply to, you know, GW stuff. But it did apply to everything It applies else, to everything else. Including like custom design stuff. So if there were like custom pieces you wanted mm -hmm. to get done or, Pretty much anything, really. It applies to custom stuff. It applies to stencils, airbrush uh, stencils, water slide decals, uh, LED the MDF kits, terrain, the MDF terrain that we have, uh, turbo paint. dork paint, yeah. um, GW, no, not GW paint, but the turbo dork paint that we sell, it applies to. Um, yeah. It applies to the 3D bits that we sell on Fallout Hobbies, like all the Chaos Eldar bits that we have, and some Space Marine bits on there as well. So, I mean, it's still, it still applies to pretty much everything else except GW stuff. Uh, Jacob Ekman says that's incredible. We'll try those out sometime. He got he has a night project that's coming up. 
and he's going to include um, some of our night size spider legs. Awesome. Nice. If you um, if you hashtag us at Fallout Hobbies, I'm usually the one that tends to reshare stuff. So if you tag it, I'll see it. If you tag it, we will post it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you build it, they will come. I also wanted to share too, um, if you didn't know this already, we do have a customer creations group that's private on Facebook and um, it's a great place to show off that stuff. We have a lot of um, commission painters in there as well and, and hobbyists. It's, it's good times. Also, I do want to mention with all with the gift cards, I mean, most people have used up the ones that they bought over Black Friday already. Yeah. There's not a lot left hanging out there, but we do have a ton of stuff that's coming in this year. We have more MDF terrain that we're going to be picking up from other vendors. We have more paint that's coming in during the course of 2021. We have... Um, uh, more stencils and decal designs and bits in designing stages now that are going to be available in 2021. We also are going to be uh, retailing uh, a whole line of sculpting tools that we're working on right now. So there's going to be new tools, new texture stampers, new bits like more chaos bits, pipes, tubes, things like that. Um, we're working with a company to get our own proprietary green stuff and brown stuff sculpting putties. Uh, we're getting our own cutting mats. A lot of stuff coming in. So, I mean, if there's not anything that's striking your fancy now, there probably will be. You have like be. up to a year to Yeah, use. you have a year. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's coming in. So. And Jeremy says, oops, hold on, I refresh the page. He says he understands that he didn't see the disclaimer when he bought it. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. It's actually on the product page, and when we did all of our marketing for it, too, um, we had a separate sale going on during Black Friday for 10% off all of the uh, GW stuff. So, But also, here's a link to our customer creations group, which I was telling you guys about. So if you're not already there, um, it's a great place to share your stuff. And... It's also where we kind of um, have a test bed where we share things with all of you guys first. And we and we poll you guys a lot for what you actually want to see. People that are members of the customer's creation are kind of like our, our brain trust where we want to get ideas from you guys and, you know. See what you think about it. See what you think about it, exactly. It's all about feedback. There we go. All right, so I was talking through the whole process that I just did right here. So the lily pads, I'm going to show you on a clean one over here. Um, the lily pads have these uh, little holes right here, um, positive and negative wires on both sides. There's a little switch right here. It's real easy. The thing is, these micro LEDs are um, coated. I'm going to find, I have a clean one over here that I didn't use. So... Uh, these wires are not just pure metal wires. They actually have a, um, a polymer coat on them to prevent them from shorting out when they get squeezed. So if you see the end of the, if you look at the ends of the wires, just the last couple millimeters are exposed wire. So the trick is when you install these, you know, you take the wire and what I like to do is I like to wrap it through a few times to get like a really nice secure connection there but it won't connect until you solder it because as soon as you solder it which is what I did here the liquid hot solder melted the uh, polyurethane coating on the wire and was able to allow the metal parts to touch each other and complete the circuit so until you solder it it's not gonna work basically you gotta solder it but um uh, that's the gist here. So the battery just, you know, plugs in here, and here's a little on-off switch. Boom, like that. I'm going to plug this soldering iron off before I melt my elbow, as I have done many times. And when I get around to um, actually making the rest of the base, 
Why can't I just stick my finger in purple paint? When, <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry. When I um, get around to working on the rest of the base, I'll be able to hide that battery clip somewhere in some rubble or underneath the statue or something like that. So let me lift the camera up here so you can kind of see the whole thing there. There we go. It's pretty tall. It's it's really it's like going past the camera. It's a pretty tall piece. But uh, yeah, that's the whole thing right there. So it's on a little switcher doodle. Not switcher doodle. Switcher doodle. Yep. You're just making up words. All right. Well, we got um. About 10 minutes left for this video, so I'm just going to spend that time painting some gemstones at this point. I already did the purple base here. You should call them happy little gemstones. Happy little gemstones? Mm -hmm. I like to do a real simple pattern with gemstones, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna show you real quick the palette here. So who is watching Star Trek? Discovery and speaking of like Bob Ross like references and stuff we were watching Star Trek Discovery the other night and it was really funny because uh, did anybody oh, the see? Pet. Yeah, the Bob Ross Chia Pets are back and that guy from the 80s. What was his name? The exercise dude. Richard Simmons. Yes I'm like is this for real? Are they punking us? No, they're back because they're like pop culture icons now. And the clapper is back, too. Well, that I don't understand. Because yeah. there's better tech than that. All right, so real quick. The formula for Eldar gemstones is super simple. You just got to do a dark color, a medium color, a lighter color, and then two highlights. And what I like to do is make sure that the dark color, and there's really only two colors. So the dark color here is this dark purple, and the lightest color would be, you know, war, uh, Warlord Purple. So I already painted it the dark purple color. Now I'm just doing a 50-50 mix of the Warlord color and the purple to make, you know, like a lighter purple, basically. I want that a little bit lighter. Yeah, that's, that's good. And then what you do is instead of painting the whole gemstone, you just kind of paint a circular shape a little bit above it. Like that. And then I'm going to do that up here. Okay. Clean the brush. Get a big old glob of the brightest color and apply it so that the surface tension keeps it kind of globulous. Globulous is a word. I'm, I'm aware. Also, in case you're wondering, we are using condiment cups for the the paint there. We do get that question a lot. I'm a big fan of bulk shopping and restaurant supply chain stores. Um, so you will find a lot of things like that around our house. All right. That's, and then that's pretty much it. You let that dry for a second. Well, a couple minutes until it's nice and dry and then get some white and just literally put two dots, one dot at the top, and one dot down below to look like there's light shooting in through the gemstone at an angle. That's it. That's it. You can do that. Oh, I mean, you could spend more time blending the edges and whatnot, but if you're painting like 400 freaking gemstones on your army, just do that simple method. It looks great. Unless you're like a foot away from the model, they look like luminous gemstones on the table. It's super, super simple. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on this side. And it applies to pretty much any color choice you want. You could do it in blues, greens, 
tan colors. I've seen people do gemstones in like off-white colors, which looks pretty cool because it looks like agate. And like I said, you could spend some more time doing more detail, but if you're just trying to get your army tabletop ready, that's all you got to do. I like to just do it when it's still wet so that it, uh, you know, maintains that kind of rounded luminescent shape there. Huh. You can get condiment cups apparently on Amazon too. For I don't like you can get anything on Amazon. Seven bucks. I feel like that needs a link to be shared. Mm -hmm. I feel like people need condiment cups in their lives. All right. Well, that's pretty much it. I can't touch these gemstones anymore until they're uh, dry to put the final highlight on it, which is just literally, like I said, two dots. But uh, that's pretty much it. So um, that's uh, all I'm going to do for the video today. I'm glad that you guys stuck around with us. You know, we did the UV resin on the gemstones here. I soldered the uh, battery pack down at the bottom over here. Soldered the battery pack and painted some gemstones. But, uh, so come check us out next week. I'm going to think of something cool for that, something different. And uh, we'll see you then. Alrighty, have a good one. Peace.